Roundup fam. What's good? What's good? What's good? Like I'm not getting in touch with people. I'm always on the damn internet. So much to talk about. Good God. Hey, round up, family. Whew, she might was a beast. My daughter didn't want to play her guitar. Wow. So if you ain't ready to have kids, don't do it. You ain't ready to have kids. Don't do it, my friends. Round up family. Good evening. Hey, Chris Haskins here, real estate roundup.com. Got a guest coming on with us to us tonight. My boy Chris. Uh, come on. Um, with my mission, my ministry to raise your financial literacy, my roundup family. <clears throat> I was hoping that if I broadcast at nighttime, it would give you an option to turn that crap TV off and give you some real TV to pour into you instead of taking it away from you. And hopefully you're not watching that, oh God, that mind destroying news. Better not be watching that crap. Shelby Paris, Edward, what's good? Edward, I emailed you, man. I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing for you, dog. Nah, it ain't horse. I had a little argument. My daughter's 11 and she's supposed to be playing guitar. Good God, she could practice. Your boy was a music major. I had my bachelor's in music. And I'm like, you know, your dad is was a music major in college. You know, it, it doesn't, I don't think it quite uh, registers with her yet. I mean, you got to know what a damn half note is, a quarter note, eighth note, rest. Dotted half notes, dotted quarter notes. You gotta know this stuff, you know, and it has to be the right tempo, you know. And I'm like, I don't want to hear it if you're not on tempo. So that's what I've been going back and forth with her. Oh my goodness, we had a game tonight that lost. <laughs> I hear you. It's rough. Class, Robert Fan, what's good? Good evening. My mission statement is to raise your financial literacy. I'm gonna bring on my boy Chris. He's up in Maryland. I uh, was I, guess I had an opportunity to hang out with him and Miss G. I'm gonna have her on again one day. I don't know if it'll be this, this week or not. But Chris, I thought it was so cool. I, I went to one of Chris's flips. The dude bought a house. I cannot wait to show you this house class. Oh and Jesus. Oh and Jesus. The house was falling down. And Chris is gonna I got some videos I'm gonna share with you. Chris will narrate them. See if I can get them on here. Oops. Class, so much to talk to you about. Good Lord. Oh, yeah, I'm a little, you know what? My daughter took a little bit out of me tonight, but <laughs> such is life, right, class? I need to get, get my their energy back up. You know what? The more energy put out to the universe, the more energy sticks to you. So let me get my energy up. Hmm. Get my state. Get my state. I'm gonna rob him. Get in my state. I'm get in my state no matter what. Let's bring on Chris. Where you at, Chris? Frederick, you closed your first deal. Oh my God. You make me. I'm so excited about that. Frederick, send me an email if you want to come on, man. I'd like to bring you on. We talk about that. Okay, Frederick, shoot me your email. Uh, my email address is in, is in the video description. If you would mind please emailing me your emailing me so I can have you. I, I would like to talk to you. Parish, you got two tenant and buyers closed at the end of the month. Oh man, praise God! I love it. People making money. I don't even care if I make money anymore. It's irrelevant to me. I just want other people to make. I'm sick of being broke people. <laughs> Frederick Paris, I know you you do more big things. Paris, don't forget, don't forget about your boy on that cruise, man. I'm down. 
class tonight. We're going to be doing a case study with us. What, what up, Chris? What's going on? What's going on? Man, I'm blessed. Yes, tonight we're going to be hanging out with Chris. What is it, Birch? Yes, sir. Chris, what city are you in, dog? I live in D.C. The property we're talking about is in PG County. PG County. I got an honor to meet this young brother. And hopefully, Chris, you know what? I still need to get up with you with that print thing, man. I got to take some yeah. of your time to talk about that. Yeah, definitely. That's some powerful stuff. What are you? What, tell me a little bit about your business real quick, Chris. You don't mind sharing. We're live already. Yeah, no problem. So <clears throat> similar to you, not identical to you, I had these great dr dreams in college to be in the music industry. <laughs> I was throwing events. I was promoting parties, college parties. Did that until I was about 27, 28, and kind of just got sick and tired of being out all night. Mm -hmm. I'm out there, you know, beating the concrete, begging people to come to my event, begging people to come to the next show, the biggest ever, whatever. Mm -hmm. And I started doing my own design work, started, you know, printing for other promoters. So I was basically working for my competition, uh, just doing it on the side. And it kind of dwelled into its own business. Now, are you, Chris, did you go back in the day of the flyers at night, putting flyers on cars? Oh, yeah. Without a doubt. That's yeah. a real hustle, isn't it, dog? I mean, the people it, don't even, they don't even, they can't even comprehend now. Yeah, I mean, I remember in college, we were at Kinko's at four o'clock in the morning, cutting and pasting and making copies and everything else. Wow. Yep. I have been there with Delonte. I mean, you have 10,000 flyers. Yep. Yeah. Oh, God, my feet hurt thinking about it, Chris. Yeah. Yeah. That is cool. So you cut your teeth in the real deal. I don't even think these cats, they think they're getting some results on Facebook. I can only imagine the stories you got. Oh, I, yeah. I could write a book. Yeah, that is cool. Well, thanks for hanging out with your boy tonight, Chris. Um, what? When did you realize you needed to get into the real estate? Just give us some background on you, because I think you got a good yeah. story. Yeah. So, doing that, I've always been an entrepreneur. I've always been self-employed. I've never qualified for anything yet. I could buy almost anything. Mm -hmm. Um, so really, it was about three years ago when I purchased my own home. And I went through the traditional go through a lender, get your qualification, go search for a house for the lender to come back and say, oh, well, you don't qualify. Mm -hmm. So that was it was irritating because I was in the traditional world, the mentality of going to a bank and getting financing and blah, blah, blah. And I figured out how to qualify, which is kind of asinine now. But I actually had to disallow a bunch of the deductions that I would usually get being a business owner to qualify for the bank loan. Say that again, Chris. Yeah. 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 Don't, yeah. don't comprehend that. Okay. So let's say I make a hundred thousand dollars a year. Gross or net? Take home hundred thousand. Net. Okay. But I bought this nice new Jaguar a year ago, right? So this new Jaguar is 60, 70 grand. I've only paid down 12 months of it, mostly interest. They're actually, the bank will come back and say that your actual take home pay is 100 K minus what you owe. Oh my Lord. Because they consider that debt. If you're a business owner, you have credit cards, credit cards to a bank mean debt. You have a $20,000 limit on an Amex card. That's against your net income. Debt um, slash liability. Correct. Correct. Uh, so what we I'm, I'm, I heard you say something about disallow. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> traditionally, as a business owner, I'm able to take deductions on a lot of stuff <clears throat> that I do for the business in the name of the business. So. I'll use a simple example. The deduction that I had to disallow, which means I forgave that and didn't deduct it from my income, was working from home. So my deduction at home, <clears throat> I can deduct, I can't remember, I can't remember if it's uh, 500 square feet times $3 or 300 square feet times $5. Either way, yeah. it's still $1,500. So I had to disallow that. 
I had to disallow my automobile expense, which I do own a business vehicle and a personal, but because I do use the personal sometimes for business, I had to disallow that deduction to increase the, sp the spread, I guess you would say, between what the bank would qualify me for to buy a home. So almost hence you're raising your taxable income, correct? Is that where we're at? I paid dearly, correct. That's amazing, Chris. I want my viewers to be an entrepreneur. I know exactly what you're doing. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's sinking in for most people because they yeah. think most people look at us and like, man, you write off everything. Right. And, and doing that is like a double edged sword from what you are saying. It can be. It can be in what we would call the traditional world, which most people are in. We we are a small group of people that are not traditional. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be a good topic. Maybe we need to, damn, Chris, we need to, we need to probably do that one day, dude, going to this tax stuff. Yeah. Wow. That's terrible, man. You know what? I remember those days trying to make a decision. Do I write it off? Do I leave it on the bank statement? Do I? I mean, it could make you go mad. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'll go off subject a, a bit for a second, but it's similar to me recently. I mentioned to you when you were up here that I have a traditional Roth IRA. I have a SEP IRA. I now understand a SEP is a very old school way of thinking. I thought it was good because an accountant told me, oh, we'll put it in the SEP. You can pay in the maximum allowed because you're a single member. Pay in, what do you mean? You're saying contribution? Yep, my con annual contribution. Yep. Gotcha. Gotcha. But <laughs> when I asked my custodian of my traditional IRA, do they do self-directed? His answer was, I don't think so, but what is that? <laughs> and, I, and I knew from that day, I need to roll that bad boy over as quick as possible. As I think that when you sent me a million emails, I think, <laughs> send those emails, what is that? That might be a red flag, my brother. Mm -hmm. Might be a red flag, my friend. Yep. Wow, Chris, you're blowing my mind, dude. Yeah, I was telling um, my, my friend Matt earlier today, mm -hmm. we think the rest of America knows what we're trying to accomplish or what we're doing, what we know, you know, and it's like, dude, they yep. don't know, man. That's our job to teach you, Chris. I think you're, I think you need the teacher too, like the way you, the way you come off your spirit and stuff, man, I think you can be a wonderful teacher once you get all this stuff down. What you think? Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Yeah. You're learning the hard way, too. You're going through it. You're living through it. Mm -hmm. How sure. hard was it for you to, when you talk to, good God, what, tell me about that conversation when you talked to them. What, they were like, what the hell is that? So I went to explain to him, as actually two people, but I'll use him as the example of what I was trying to do. Mm -hmm. And his first answer was, well, I think that's really risky. You have the CPA or the, 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 the custodian of my IRA. Mm -hmm. I don't ask my I don't ask my accountant much other than my accountant is more a bookkeeper, yeah. not, not an advisor. He puts everything in all the right columns for myself and my tax preparer to then plan what we need to do. Yeah. But the custodian of my IRA said that he wouldn't recommend it mainly because he didn't know about it and he yeah. was privy to the information he wasn't saying it was good or bad he would just he, he had no idea what i was talking about wow were you were you using a small custodian locally or something so it's a it, it, the the kind of mind saying it the company is janny they're they're a large firm i had never heard of them i was referred to them by a family member who's in investment banking and he said, hey, I went to school with the guy. He's personable. You can talk to him, explain to him what you want to do. But <clears throat> when I looked at it the end of last year, I've made some personal investments, some crowdfunding stuff in real estate, kind of small. But when I looked at the math of it, I have roughly five times the amount in my traditional IRA as I invested personally. And for 2018, I saw equal return from both dollar amount. The stuff that you did. The stuff I did with my own yielded the same return as five times the amount in my traditional. 
Unbelievable. So that's when I started researching how do I roll this bad boy over that's and right. what I want to do with it. Good for you, Chris. I think the, uh, the wealth management industry, if you will, mm -hmm. they don't broadcast itself because they can't get paid on the decisions that you make. No, and what I've learned, honestly, nothing against the financial institutions or the investment groups. They make their money on transactions. That's right. That's how they make their money. When they move money around, it's the same thing with the stock market. They want you to buy and sell. That's it. Wow. I'm so glad you're telling people, class, what he is talking to, man, <laughs> that's deep stuff. All right, Chris, you see me with my apron on as I move into my meatless, my second week of not eating meat. I'm trying to, uh, I met with a guy on a cruise. He's like, dude was from South Africa, man. He's like, man, you need to put some effort into your health. Yeah. So I'm like, uh, I never thought about the effort that I put into my wealth management. I need to do some health effort, you know, so. Cooking every day now, Chris. I'm making vegetables. <laughs> That's good. That's good. I'm not. I'm not a hundred percent, but I have not had beef, chicken, or pork in. I know they always say you can't. If you can't remember how long it's been, that's a good thing. But I don't yeah. know if I really remember. I do yeah. indulge. I do indulge in some seafood, but that's it. You gotta have your crabs. Come on, man. Hard crabs. You can't beat it, man. <laughs> you right there in the backyard. I know. All right, so I wanted class. Chris and I are going to just real, very briefly go over this flip he's working on. I thought, Chris, what you're doing is amazing, actually. The, the eye that you have looking over this stuff, and you've only been doing it for a short period of time. Yeah. So we'll talk about this flip for a short time, Chris, and then we'll do some Q&A at the end. Is that okay? That, that works, yeah. Yeah, so I'm going to bring up some I'm going to share my screen, Chris. Yep. And if you wouldn't mind being the narrator as I bring up that email to sure. Because uh, I got the video first, and then you sent me the previous condition, which is stupid. Good gracious. Oh, and Jesus. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I have the video too, Chris, so if you could narrate the video. We're going to do the pictures the first, and then we'll get into the video. You can narrate it. Okay. Show everybody what's going down. And if I lose you, because my computer acted funny last night. I'll be right back. All right. All right, brother Chris, you see my screen? Yes, sir. All right, let's do it, my friend. So <clears throat> this is not how we purchased the house. Did you send me one how you got it? Did you send me one? You. There you go, right there. Yep. Well, that's the video, oh, but. Here we go. Okay. Yep. Good Lord, Chris. Yeah. So the reason being the house in this condition, we learned obviously after we purchased it, that to the right and left of that dormer, that window up top there on the roof, mm -hmm. originally these houses were constructed with chimneys because back in the 1920s, that was very common to have a fireplace. Mm -hmm. The previous owner, from what we understand, understand now, decided her, his first thing would be to go in there and tear out the two chimneys, not realizing that was actually the support structure for the house. Mm -hmm. so if you see to the left there, you can see just from the center, the whole house is basically imploding on itself. I see that. Okay. Good Lord. Give us a real quick 40,000 foot view of how you found this deal, Chris, and kind of like how you put it all together. How did it come together real well, quick? Kind of funny. Um, we actually did a house on the same street a year and a half ago. Mm -hmm. Drove past this house every day, didn't know what it was. And last fall, it popped up on the MLS. And uh, I have a good friend of mine who's a neighbor as well as a realtor um, where I live. And I asked him, I said, hey, you know, you know, start an MLS search for me, you know, in, in this area of PG County for like one hundred and thirty to I think one hundred and thirty five thousand dollars or less. Mm -hmm. Same day he sent that email to me with the availabilities. I see the same house. 
contacted the listing agent who was actually the foreclosure attorney and um, sent in the offer. Uh, he responded, you know, that he had a couple others. He'll review them and, you know, let us know about probably not even a week later, we had a ratified contract Nice. and actually settled pretty quick. We settled and this was a, a, a foreclosure. It was listed as a short sale. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, we still closed in less than 30 days. I mean, it was kind of surprising because I've heard stories of short sales taking forever, you know. But yeah. as you go around the house, uh, the siding was in decent condition. <clears throat> yeah. Not great, decent condition, I would say. Um, mm -hmm. But the interior is. I don't think you see me. I don't think I got any of those. Oh, did I? You started well, yeah. That was after we ripped the roof off. But there's a there was a second video that had interior. Oh, let me see. Hold might on. be that first one just above oh. there. What? Might be. Is it that? No. Uh, that's uh, that's the one I just played. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, I thought I had sent you an interior. Um, I mean, if you if you want for for like there's two images right there, but if you were to search on YouTube, the address there's two okay. videos there. Okay, all right. Let's see. Let me see. I can do that real quick. I think it'll give just everyone a perspective of what it was like. I think that would be good. Class hanging out with Chris Birch up in Maryland. P what is it? PG County? Yeah, the house is in PG. Yep. Mm -hmm. Prince George's County. Give me, how do I what do I do a search, Chris? What do I type in? 2906. Kirtland, K-I-R-T-L-A-N-D Avenue. Class, I'm doing this because I don't want you to think. You're going to do HGTV and get out of this thing easy. <laughs> yeah, We all watched it. We all said, oh, man, we could do that. They did that in like 30 minutes. They did the whole house. <laughs> I, love it. I love it. These people need to be sued. All right, here we go. I found that other video. So that's actually looking at the from the inside. That's the front door. But pan over to the right, that's a front bedroom. Adjacent to that, well, actually, there's the up to the roof where the hole is or was. That's a living room to the right. And then you kind of walk into livable space where they have another bedroom to the left there. And then she pans around. So that's what used to be a kitchen. That's where the uh, gas line came up for the stove. Mm -hmm. But what she's not showing in this, and I, I saw in that email I had sent you that you can see how bad the structure was. Yeah, the walls. I wanted to see that too. I didn't see it. Yeah. You're talking about the walls blowing out? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yep. yeah. Yeah. Obviously, this was, I think, maybe not the listing agent, maybe someone who worked for the listing agent. Did they do some work already, Chris? That electrical panel? Was this before you bought it or what? They, you... they actually put in new electric with the roof caving in. That is backwards. They ran brand new electric. Oh, my Lord. Look at that. Whew. Yeah. You can see outside, dog. Yes, sir. You see, you see, you see the sunlight coming in from the roof, not the window. I did. <laughs> skylight. It was a, it was a Sky. skylight. Yeah. All right. So number you picked it. Give us a number real quick. You picked it up for what? Uh, list. Well, no. So list was 98. We offered 110. The listing agent came back and said that the seller was upside down had no money to close. So they it was a short sale. I mean, you already knew that. Yeah, exactly. So they counted at 108 and we closed. What made you go over asking? 
multiple offers. Mm -hmm. That was my only gut instinct that I figured that extra 5,000 was not anything detrimental. Mm -hmm. And then they only countered back at 3,000 above list. So, yeah. Right, man. Yeah. Nice. Okay. So, oh, I do look. I want to. I want to show those pictures, Chris. Yeah, of how the front wall and the back wall are. Yeah. Basically, going outward. If you're just joining this class, I'm hanging out with Chris. We're just going to do a case study of one of his flips up in Maryland. I want you to see the construction, what's different up there than it is down here. I think every area has their little, I don't know, you know niche, niche on what they like to do. I think Chris has a good uh, feel for the, for the market up there. Okay, so I got, I'm going to show you a few of those pictures that you sent me. Then we'll get to the video. Yeah, so that's where I ripped the roof off. I just cannot believe it. So if you look at the very top of the picture there, there is a what we call an LVL, which is a laminated veneer beam. Right here. Yep. So <laughs> there was nothing there. Literally, the rafters, where you see the guy in the middle, mm -hmm. kind of temporary you know, uh, support there, the rafters went straight up and just tied into each other. There was no, there was no cross support for them. Give me a visual of that, Chris. I got two planks coming to the head. How is that even possible? Nineteen twenty-three construction. I, I mean, I don't know, but they haven't done it like that in a long time. The planks so were they forty-five? Did they cut up? Did they? Did they? Make yeah. it so that, okay. Exactly. So they just they went straight up. That's just amazing, dude. Yep. Yep, that was right before we put it up. You can see the boom lift on the right of the picture there, getting ready to lift that laminated beam up in position. Chris, I got to ask, how on the earth much did that beam cost, man? Three, I think it was like 350 To For that one, the one all the way across? Just one, yep. And then there's a lower one on the inside was about the same. It was about 700 bucks for two, two, pieces, two, two pieces of wood. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm, you know, you're lucky. I really think you're blessed that you didn't have to get that thing metal, dog. Yeah, that's true. You probably had a few more feet. How many? How wide? Is, how long is it? Thirty, just over thirty-two feet. Yeah, I bet you were very close to having that thing not meet the specs or the code of being wood. Yeah, I know in Maryland, uh, the code any the span larger, longer than twenty-four feet requires that laminated beam. Mm-hmm. Because you can't you can't buy that wood at Home Depot. They no. don't they don't sell it. Good gracious! All right, so this is when we first got, had the opportunity to go up there. They're not going to be able to hear it, Chris. So you're going you can narrate it as we're walking through. All right. Sure. To make this thing to play. All right, so this is the exterior. Oh, tight, Chris. All right. All right, let me get the next video up. You can see that there. Man, this is just unbelievable stuff you're doing. Whew. Here we go. It's hard to hear, though. It's really hard to hear the video when I play video. You really can't hear it. So it's better if you just narrate it. Okay. Oops. Are you talking? I can't even. Hold on, Chris. I can't hear you. I'm sorry. Did you say something, Chris? Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah, my bad. Yep. I had you on mute. Excuse me. Gotcha. I'm going to play it, Chris. Go ahead and uh, see if you can follow along and give us a little narration. 
So if you see there, those are all new rafters going all the way up to that LVO beam we were just talking about. Yeah. Directly above us, those <laughs> eight smaller eight inch. And actually, I, I remember Chris saying, class, this is all new wood. <laughs> there is no listing anything. There, this is all new wood. And he's right. So that front porch that he's he's standing on now, you'll see all new rafters going out onto the porch. That's one single piece, one single piece. We did not take off the side walls. We left both walls existing on the side. Mm -hmm. Look at this, Chris. This is looks this just looks beautiful. Work. You got a good guy working on this stuff. Yeah, yeah. I actually um my partner on this project is my contractor. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, which this is our first one doing it this way. And like anything, you, you learn a whole bunch about each other. I've known him for 20 years, but yeah. actually doing this, you learn a ton. And, you know, I think both of us are actually, we'll be happy to get out of the project, of course, mm -hmm. but there's a lot of things that we just won't do this way. It's not that we did anything wrong. It's just continually saying, hey, we could have done this or we could have done that. But Chris, you're trying. The thing it is, man, you're going to mess up, dude. I love the fact you entrepreneurs, you're going <clears> to <throat> mess up. Nothing's going to be done right the first few yeah. times. Yeah. Remind me when we're done walking through, I, I do have a quick story of a, a local real estate investor that was at my shop this past week and had, had a good conversation with, but the mentality kind of made me laugh. So remind me when we're finished. Okay. Let me make a note of that. Let me see. I'm going to play. Keep going, Chris. So we got all new wood here. All new rafters, all new posts on the front porch. The front porch, the, the base of the porch is <clears throat> cinder block and uh, solid concrete. So luckily, we don't have to do much there. Mm -hmm. uh, we're all walking around on the driveway side now. So as you see, that existing wall, we didn't touch it. If you notice those... Um, the old style shingles, those 20 inch shingles, those are actually asbestos. Mm -hmm. We just left them up there. We have, we're not touching them. Nope. I don't want either. Yep. We're not touching them. Uh, as long as you don't touch them and the fibers don't get in the air, there's no issue. So we're going to basically, you see that vapor barrier, the ever built that we started to wrap. We'll wrap that around the whole house and new yep. siding will go up. Nice. Um, but you see how that beam comes all the way out. So that right. beam actually comes out into what's called the soffit, which mm -hmm. is the, the overhang on the house. Yep. Yep. And that beam is one solid piece of laminated lumber that goes 32 feet across. Man, I am so scared of that wood. How the hell do you even get it there? I mean, the delivery had to be 50 bucks to get one piece of wood there. Uh, it, it was delivered on site. I don't know if that was included in the 350. I need to <laughs> double check it, but I think it was. Look at that class. Ooh, that's just crazy, man. Yeah. And it's crazy what they do to make that stuff. It's basically a bunch of two by tens or two by eights or two by twelves. <coughs> and they just hard press laminate them together to make this really, really durable beam. Mm -hmm. That is so cool. Yeah. Well, you I guess you went to a seminar on that, huh? With that uh with those planks not even having a I guess what would you call it? A, a, I mean, a girder to even no low bearing nothing up there. No. Nah. No. Nah. Yeah, we we had three or four different people give us suggestions on what we should do, and they were talking about building trusses and pinning the foundation, and you know, there was a million different things that we had to kind of calculate to make the best decision. So, yeah. Wow, building trust that would be. Yeah. Good God. Right. A lot more wood. Yeah. Yeah. So we're at the back door. And as you see there, we put all new all new roof on, brand new subroof, brand new padding, brand new shingles on the whole roof. And then, Chris, what you were explaining here, if you see the height of that house next door, mm -hmm. see how short that is from where the top of that window is at the back of that house. On the very back of that that house there, yeah. This house that we are working on, 
was almost identical. Mm -hmm. Well, what we decided is when we were doing the initial drawings, I said, there's no reason to put in a seven foot pitched roof. Let's bump that up. We actually bumped it up to nine feet, which didn't change the pitch of the roof, anything drastic. And now we have a full, you know, ceiling height on the whole back of the house as well, just to expand the living space. That's so cool. That was so smart of you, Chris. That's like, what, a few thousand dollars just to do that? Maybe not even that. It was wood. I mean, you know, two by eight versus a two by ten. Oh, okay. You're talking about you had to take the whole thing down anyway. We already ripped it all off. Yep. We're just putting new wood up. So you see Chris is here. Tell us, Chris, what you got right here. All right. So you see there, you have another almost 18 inches of headroom in comparison to the neighbor's house. Yes. That is so smart, dog. Whew. Yeah. And that was actually, that wasn't, cal now that I think about it, that wasn't an architect thing. That was when we started to reframe the back wall and the guys actually built it at nine. And I said, why did they build it at nine? They said, well, we need enough headroom to put in if we're gonna put in you know, a, a, a lowered ceiling or if we're gonna put in a ceiling fan or something like that. Mm -hmm. And we looked at it and said, no, let's just leave it like that. Like, now we have a vaulted ceiling on the back of the house. Oh yeah, we'll get to that in a minute. Let me get inside. All right, so we got that one. Yeah, these videos came out pretty good, Chris. <clears throat> now we're inside. Yep, we are inside. Walking through the back door, you're walking into a kitchen. So where I'm standing is actually the sink or what will be the sink. If you look to the left of your screen, in between those wall joists, you can see the blocks that are already there for our cabinet guys to basically draw, I mean, hung the cabinet straight to that wall. Mm -hmm. Looking straight ahead, there's actually gonna be, well, there is now, but when we did this video, there was not, there's a wall, basically where that angle two by four comes down, that's gonna be the laundry room. Hold on, do I need to, is that straight ahead, Chris? That, that, that was- uh, Right here, is this what we're going to say, the laundry area here? Laundry's right there, yep. All right. So we have laundry here. Is that gonna be the hot water heater in there too, Chris? Hot water heater, washer dryer, and maybe enough room. We're not sure, we didn't We didn't um, put it in the drawings. We actually could have probably done a half bath back there, um, just oh, off wow. the home. We have more than enough square footage to do that, but we're already permitted to do what we're doing. We're just kind of an afterthought saying, wow, we got way more space than we thought. You know what's weird? Yeah, you know what's crazy, man? You can get real creative and just do, I know I've just put a, um, shit, I put a toilet and a sink inside the room where you just keep, you know, it's like one yeah. room with all of it in there. Because yeah. anyway, two people going to be in there at the same time. Right, exactly. You know? Exactly. So what I'm explaining right there is that's actually, it's framed in, but that's walking out of the kitchen into the main hallway. And we've already done it, but what I was explaining is that we actually cut out from that point there over to where my right hand is. So there's about a 48 inch opening with a brand new header. So when you walk in the front door, you basically have the scope looking straight down the hallway into the living room straight out the window to the backyard. Nice. That's a good idea. Yeah. I mean, nice. this house is only 1,150 square feet. I love the fact when you, any any building, Chris, my, my cousin is an architect. And he said he always likes to have it when you go in the front door, you can see all the way through, to, mm -hmm. through the back window out. Yep. Yep. Chris, I'm looking above your head at money. I'm looking at another one. It looks like it's another beam. Is that another big boy right there? Another 350. Yep. <laughs> so where I'm standing now is going to be the living room. You see right behind me, brand new electrical. And then also next to that panel coming down is the condenser line coming down with all new HVAC. Yep. Let's do this. Might be best to kind of fast forward here. Yeah. 
So uh, in so by, directly behind me there, where you were, is the front door. That's the front door right there. Okay. When you walk in that front door to the right, you have a master bedroom with an ensuite bath. Nice. That is the bedroom to the left. So I'm actually now standing in the master bedroom. Mm -hmm. To the right of the, or excuse me, to the left of the front door entrance is another bedroom to the left there. And I think what I was kind of explaining to you is kind of what I just said is you come in, you have a bedroom to the left, bedroom to the right. Yeah. But opposed to just having two bedrooms butted up against each other, what we actually did is we expanded both bedrooms to now have a common Jack and Jill bath. So both left-handed bedrooms now have a common bath as well as there will be a bath entrance from the hallway. I like that. Yeah, we were trying to we were trying so this house was a three bedroom one bath and in our market you got to have two full bath i mean even one and a half is just it's a hard sell you know um people want full bathrooms i wouldn't do it chris yeah matter of fact uh, a lot of the lenders around my town yeah they're not even loaning money if you do not put it up bathroom and the master bedroom dog yeah. yep can't get the money that's smart you do that yeah i mean i listen <laughs> i haven't been doing it long but i listen where did you get that from my I didn't know to do that my great friend i used to fall asleep to playing on a i don't know if your class knows about dvd players we used to have dvd players <laughs> but uh my good friend, Mr. Jim Rohn, mm -hmm. taught me a million life lessons. Yeah. And it's just, it's information. It's, you know, I find myself using his references all the time and I stop and say, wow, I heard that 15 years ago. It's something, right? Yeah. I remember buying his stuff. Now you can hear it all on YouTube for free almost. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. So your numbers. So uh, where are you at now with it, Chris? I haven't seen you in two weeks. No. Yeah, two weeks. So plumbing is finished. HVAC is finished. Uh, On the rough inside. So just explain to my viewers. Okay. When my yeah. family knows I don't know what rough end is. Sure, sure. The rough end is done, meaning all the walls are exposed, but all the plumbing pipes, all the electrical lines, the electrical outlets, the HVAC system, in, interior, not exterior, but interior is in position. All of the flexible hose going down to the registers, as well as the returns, all that is installed. And we're calling on Thursday for a close-in inspection nice. to get that done. Um, nice. this, is my, this is my first one in PG County. I've never done this scope of work ever in life. This is this is the first to this scope. Wow. And your reno, Chris, is going to run you what, approximately? So, like any reno, we're over budget. No doubt. Um, I put a $10,000 cushion in there when we initially did a budget. Mm -hmm. And we're about four over that. Yeah. Well, is that including appliances? Or you're not even going to do that appliances? Is. That's including appliances. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah, and I mean, what I said earlier, where I'm partnered with my contractor on this deal, I can't say I wouldn't recommend doing it because he's a great friend and he's actually got a great crew. Yeah. But I got to see inside his business. What do you mean? So if you hire a contractor, they give you a quote, they give you a scope of work, and they give you a price. I actually got to see what it's really costing him, not just materials, labor, how to manage his labor. Hmm. And his biggest expense is labor. I mean, labor is four times material, maybe five times material. More up there, too, than it is down here. Down here, it's around three. Yeah. Yep. Wow. 
Wow. For me, I mean, I don't want to downplay it and say if I walk away and we all take our money back out of it, it was a great learning lesson because that's not what we're doing it for. Um, but I've learned, I don't know if I could go to school and get the education that I've learned in the last three oh, months. They don't teach this stuff, Chris. Exactly. Exactly. You in real school of hard knocks, dog. And for the first thing, every fill up I do, I'm like, first thing is capital preservation. Can I get my money back? Yep. That's rule number one. Number yep. two, do I make a profit? Yep. No, no. Number two is do my investors make money? Yes. Number three, do I make money? Yeah, because I'm we're way down the line. Yeah. Yeah. So at least you get the worst case, you'll get your money back. Worst, worst case, we don't it's not the goal, but um sure. What type of tell me about your financing, Chris? Would you care to share some of that on here? Well, you said I'm from the school of hard knocks. I actually buy bought this house with my own money. That's cool. Okay. That means you don't have uh, interest payments going on every month. No interest payments. Um I would like to be charging myself interest. That's a good point. I would. Um, because I think if anybody else loaned me that money. They're going to charge me something. That's right. You know, That's right. Uh, and then my partner on the project, he's financing the rehab. That ain't a bad deal. No. No. A bad deal. Yeah. So your ARV is what is going to be get out of here, Chris? So three bed, two bath in that zip code. I actually, let me grab my, I took a picture of it. I'm on all of the, you know, the Zillow, the Red, and the whatever. Send yeah. you a listing of what's, you know, how many sold and what condition and what zip. So I have a, a targeted email that I get uh, uh, every week, and I got one. This was last, probably last Friday. Where is it? All right. Median household value is two forty. Oh man! Uh, it is up four point five percent from one year ago. Mm -hmm. There are currently sixty four homes for sale, and twenty three of them have recently sold. Nice, Chris. I got to be honest with you, brother. This is this time of year is it the best time to have a house for sale. Yeah, I mean, we were we really wanted to get on the market by May first, and I don't think we're gonna get there, but we're gonna be close. Good for you. Good. Sounds like you got a phenomenal contract, to Chris. I don't know, man. You're not getting the the real contractor experience per se, because the guy you know is you trust him and he's your business partner. Yeah, but well, I will give you I'll give you a story though. I did get part of a contractor. <laughs> our plumbing, our plumber, who is a subcontractor. Because you have to have a license in the state of Maryland to pull a permit to install plumbing. Mm -hmm. Most general contractors don't carry plumbing, electric, or mechanical for HVAC. Most of them are general contractors. Yeah. So good friend of my partner, from what I understood, is a plumber, does a lot of work with him. Gave us a quote in November when we acquired the property. We went through the whole process got to the point where we're ready to do the work and he comes back and his price has now inflated by almost five thousand dollars good lord what for did he say the scope of work he said well i thought we were going to just be running hot and cold water lines and tying in stuff but yet he actually came to the property so he saw the condition there was nothing existing um i just think he was he felt like we were behind the eight ball or mm -hmm. whatever you want to call it, that we were desperate. Yeah. That's so terrible, man. My HVAC guy was working and saying, hey, Chris, everything's wide open. Where's your plumber? What are we waiting for? Like, yeah. I, got, I got needs for water, too, because I'm doing, <clears throat> I'm doing the HVAC. And why is your plumber not here? And I didn't tell him, of course. I said, well... You have someone. He said, yeah, my, my partner's a plumber. He came in 1500 below the original plumber's quote. Wow. And did the house in three days. 
And it sounds like he's trying to just rip you off, bro. Yeah, that's all. That's all. But I mean, for I guess for a lot of your class, I've been in business for myself since 2004. Mm -hmm. I've practically been held up at a bank in business for most of my adult life. Yeah. So you kind of just brush it off. You move on to the next one. Nice. Nice. It's not easy, but you kind of develop a tolerance for it. Mm -hmm. You know? I mean, I deal with it with the banks. You know, the traditional banks. You go in and they give you a line of credit because you're doing this great business with them and yada, yada, yada. And 18 months later, oh, we need to requalify you because X, Y, Z. And, mm -hmm. oh, Chris, you're not going to requalify at this point. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's the crap that I cannot. God, man, that's why I'm sure you probably watch my stuff. I got a little chip on my shoulder when it comes to dealing with banks, dog. Oh, I was watching this guy Sunday. <clears throat> not a, a master class but he's kind of like a master class guy and he said i'm not mad at the banks because the banks do what they do i'm not mad at wall street because they do what they do i'm mad because they lied to us as business owners oh so they tell you basically take your income put it in this nice little retirement account and let us manage your money well if you know, like, you know, I know, like, you know, they don't really manage anything. They just put it over there based on where their institution says they can invest it. And we go back to what I said earlier. It's transactions, keeping the money moving. Wow. Wow. Man. Yeah. It's ironic because I never lived in that world. My mentors, Chris, they were all real estate guys. Linus Krugs, he owned four. I don't know. Four mobile homes. He's the one that taught me about this stuff, direct this stuff. Okay, dude, I don't know nothing about it. Man, people call me all the time about what I think about this investment of stock or mm -hmm. Bitcoin. I'm like, man, I, I have no idea. Yeah, none. Yeah, I, I can tell you this: every stock advisor that had ever advised me, I never made money. What? Never. Really? Everything I did from the heart from your gut made money. Wow, Chris. That's so deep, man. Yeah. That's so deep. I hope you are getting some knowledge from Chris tonight. The man is full-time entrepreneur since 2004. I love it, man. You really are in line with my mission statement, Chris. I enjoy talking to you, bro. Yeah. But I will say, Chris, that I do owe you some gratitude because you actually, your videos, your your explanation is so beneficial because nobody shares this information. Mm -hmm. They just don't. I never understood though. It, Chris, I don't, you know, as I was matriculating, getting older, I'm like, uh, why don't people talk about this? Stuff? Why don't we even, I guess we don't know to talk about it, but why is it so hidden? I, I really think that it's by design, Chris. I, I think I would have to agree with you because as much as I might say that I'm trying to have the least liability tax-wise, mm -hmm. someone's got to pay all these taxes to keep everything running and the infrastructure and the roads. Well, you bet they are. They don't get it. They yeah. don't get it. Yeah. But even with the self-directed stuff, just, just, that's just one thing, Chris. I mean, we could go 20, 30 things, but I think yeah. the system, even the wealth, the, I guess the financial industry, they don't want us to know that did you know that you could actually manage your own retirement account? Did you, you right. know, it's like it's almost like you can't do that. You can't. Yep. Even from a custodian telling me, I don't know about that. And they're the ones running the show. You were my advisor. Right? Wow. Yeah. Man. Blowing my mind. I, well, I know for 100% Fidelity doesn't offer this. I called them because I had another investor that wanted to do it. Mm hmm. They don't offer self-directing. Yeah. And he said if we did, we would we would consider it, we would consider it if you had a million dollars in your account. Well, know, it's like you know. going to a bank as a business owner. You the bank's not gonna loan you a hundred thousand mm -hmm. dollars. They don't make any money on a hundred thousand dollars, not at traditional interest rates. It's not enough for them. 
So you're going to just spend your time getting your paperwork set down on a conveyor line and it's going to go through underwriting and then it's going to come right back and you're going to say, hey, I didn't get that loan. Mm -hmm. You didn't ask for enough. That's right. But you did because you don't think you qualify for it. You probably won't qualify for it. They want you to be in debt, right? Yeah. Yeah. All right, class. We've been on here for an hour. Do you have any questions for Brother Chris or me on deals? Chris, thank you for hanging out with me, my friend. Without a doubt. Let me see if we got any questions here for Chris on that flip there. I thought it was just paramount that we would share that there. <clears throat> Frederick, make sure you email me, Frederick. I want to bring you on that subject to deal, my friend. Paris got two tenant buyers. Nice. Frank, I will, yeah, I got your email, my friend. Somebody got their first signed contract today. Congratulations, Marcus. Good for you, my friend. Street signs. There you go. Stuff works. Daniel wants to know, where do you get your vision for your flips, uh, Chris? Honestly, I think the first instinct is to understand the style of the home in what, in what its original form, how it was built. Existing blueprint, a footprint. Yeah, existing footprint. So with, with this property that we're doing now, there kind of was a footprint, but there was the flow was horrible. It just didn't it didn't work. It's a box. I mean, I hear people say it all the time. Well, all we do is build four walls. Everything else is cosmetic. Yeah. You know. Yeah. But I yeah. think, yeah, I mean, to answer that, it it is really based on what is there and what can you make a, like a simple change to. Those two bedrooms to the left there, a simple change was we only needed five feet in between each to put in a Jack and Jill bathroom. Your yeah, standing yeah. room is only right. 60 inches for a tub, so we only need five feet wide. Mm -hmm. So we gained that from increasing that back room, or excuse me, reducing the back room to increase the two front rooms to add that bath in between. It sounds like you are... Focus on focusing on on one of the three pillars that my mentor calls expandability. Yep. How can you expand the existing footprint? Yeah, same thing we did in the back room. We expanded the height of that ceiling to make that room bigger or nice. to feel bigger. Nice. Isaac wants to know: Is Maryland a good area for newbie and in investors to invest in? Uh, Chris, it's I'm only in property, so sure. Yeah, I mean, what I will tell you, Maryland, Maryland is vast. I mean, Maryland goes as far north as Pennsylvania, and, and as far a lot there, isn't it? Yep, and as far south as Virginia. I remember when I was in college down in Norfolk, taking seventeen, all the backside. Yep, yep. Wow, I forgot about that. I forgot that's Maryland. Yep. <laughs> yep. But yeah, no, I mean, for a newbie investor, there's a there's a ton of competition. Yeah. A lot of money up there, though, because coming flowing from D.C. Yep, it right. is. It is. So, I mean, a lot of the Prince George's County suburban. Um, Chris, what's your other your other classmate up here north of me? Oh, pa Paris? Paris, yeah. Paris, I saw one video. He was doing something in, I think it was Capitol Heights. He was trying to pick up a property. Mm -hmm. That's even closer to D.C. than where our house is. So we're about four miles from the border. And he's probably a hop, skip, and a jump, you know. But it's so strange because his house is probably going to be in the same 250 to 300 range on the retail side. Mm -hmm. Across Southern Avenue, you're starting at 500. Across across the street? I mean, literally across the street, yes. Good Lord, man. As soon as you cross into D.C. The gentrification up there is just under D.C. I hope somebody does a documentary on it. I'm sure they do. They have. Yeah, there's a lot of it going around, yep. Yeah, my best friend Simone bought a house for a hundred thousand. I mean, her next door neighbor sold for seven. Yeah. Year, you know? yeah. Oh. 
Oh, Daniel wants to know, are you looking for any wholesalers in your area up there, Chris? Always. How do people get in touch with you, brother Chris? Is it, is it, do you want them to email you or phone or Facebook? I don't know. Yeah, best way is cbinvestmd at gmail.com, or I can give you my Google voice, which is 202 uh, 750 0773. I'm typing the 0773. Yep. CB invest at gmail.com is Chris. CB at gmail.com. CB invest MD like doctor. Yep. Yeah. Oh, I don't okay. I like that though. Yeah, I'm the doctor of investment. There you go. That's right. That's right. 202 Yes, sir. In there, I'll put it in the video description too, Chris. I'm telling you, the gold is in the Chris, the gold is in the networking, bro. That's a hundred percent. You know that, yeah. A hundred percent. Sky Investment says, "Sound like you know yourself." Well, you listen. Tasha Cruz wants to know, Chris, uh, if the numbers don't work for a wholesale deal, why mm -hmm. do flippers like owner financing or subject to if the numbers don't change on a non livable home? All right, read that again. She wants to know if the numbers don't work for a wholesale deal, mm -hmm. why do flippers like owner financing or subject to uh, on subject to on those type of deals if the numbers don't work on a uh, wholesale deal? Well, for for a, a, a owner finance or lease option, that's that's a gain on the long term. Long term. Yeah. Tasha, wholesaling is just going to be, you know, and I want to be frank, all you wholesalers out there, you know, we have a million channels talking about it. Yep. It's cool. I'm not mad at wholesaling, you know, but I'm like, uh, it's, so, it's overrated. It's been doing, people have been doing it forever. I had a guy call me about a week ago and he told me he had a place under contract. Gave me the address, gave me all the information. And then he tells me, he's like, yeah, because I bought a uh, second position for 20 grand. Okay. I was like, okay, cool. And we went and looked at the property, and I have my little check sheet, check, you know, property owner, check the local civil court, check the deed and see if it's whatever, whatever. And I found that there had already been a... Um, a board of trustees created and I found out the attorney who did it. I called the attorney and he says, yeah, well, yeah, some developer in Florida bought that like three months ago. Bought the first. Yeah. Oh, so he's done. He's done. He's done. But my point being, I would, as a wholesaler, if you're doing that, I would never tell someone your position. You just, you hold the contract. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. Just hold the contract. Yeah. He's done. Also, you just uh, man, so it's non-stop. You never get your money working for you. Ah, uh, gracious! I try to find all these. Things. Would you remind them the oh metal claw? That's a cool name. Theo, hey, does my lease option package include the lease and the option? Yes, and the lease and the option between the buyer and you for sandwich lease option. Yes, you get all, you get both of them. Oh, Chris, I, I will mention one thing to help your class understand. So being in business, obviously, I've dealt with attorneys and whatnot for different things. The cheapest attorney to create a simple land trust that Chris does sell was $3,800, and that was sight unseen. That was his starting price. You've got to be joking, dude. Oh. Nope. That's another one of those things why it's not generally offered to. That's sad, Chris. 
That's just sad. Man. I'm not mad at him. That's how he makes his living. But if you're privy yeah. to the information and you know someone like Chris and he's willing to, for a couple bucks, show you how to do it, do it. <laughs> That's crazy. Do it. I'm too cheap, Chris. 3800 Damn, I'm not even... Wow. Right. You know, if I had my law license, dude, I would be... I have a yacht somewhere, man. It's the right. best stuff as I'm giving away. Yeah. Uh, Harry, we went over the numbers on the house already, Harry. I don't want to go back over that. I'm sorry. Mark, having a hard time finding cash buyers. Any advice finding cash buyers for Mark Cooper? Finding cash buyers? Is he a wholesaler, I'm assuming? Yep, he's trying to wholesale something, trying to find cash buyers. Keep talking. I've heard Chris say it. Just keep talking. Go to your local real estate investment group. Mm -hmm. There'll be a million guys in there pitching deals. Talk to people. You know, I've only been to one. Um, but just in conversation, I, I run another business. I'm in the print industry. And I can't wait for another customer to come in who says that they're they're printing up a business card that says they're a real estate investor or they're looking to buy houses or they're even just a, a local real estate agent. And I talk to them. Yeah. You know? Yeah, works. Yeah. Mark, what is it? A Mark, I want to say I love it when my, when my clients can't find a cash buyer because there's several things you can do. You got to have your your bandit signs out. Ugly a house was house for sale, cash cheap. You got your Craigslist ad going now. You got your Facebook ads going, and don't forget you can list your house on the MLS. I can't get into that right now. You can list your contract on the MLS. Mark, finding a cash buyer is the easiest thing to do. But I know what the hell you're doing. But the no, I want to know if the numbers work. Yeah. And what are your uh, what are your buyers saying when they go look at it? Marquise wants to know. Hey, Marquise wants to know how do you know if a home needs all new wiring, Chris? Um, I would maybe suggest. Now it depends. If you're looking at a house to buy the house, if you have a local contractor in your area, maybe you can schedule with the agent that you're going to try to purchase it with. Mm -hmm. to have that electrical contractor come with you before you even write an offer and he can tell you oh it's it's a 100 amp panel it's old it's whatever you can get a quote from him probably before you even write an offer there you go we were lucky on our property there was no drywall so we were able to see what was there but in most homes it's already closed in so you don't know you don't know so you start ripping I'm just talking about question marks. I love them. Question marks. Yeah. Then yeah, he bought it for. I mean, he already went over the numbers class. People went over. It's one hundred eight. Spent eighty thousand on it. You got the uh, ARA, Daniel. Thank you for putting that in there. He put, we went over the numbers. I don't want to go over that again. Um. Otasha oh, wants to know: Do you only do deals in Maryland, Chris? No, not at all. I would. I would entertain. Anything within reason. Gotcha. Reasonable. Yes. Paris. Oh, he said his property is in Capitol Heights, about yeah. one point five miles from uh, DC. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Three hundred thousand. SJ. Well, we can both chime in, Chris. I don't know if you're doing lease options. How much more do I charge for a rent on lease option compared to a regular lease? Hmm. Yeah, I'm I have not had any experience with doing that. I do know in Maryland you cannot do a lease option. You have to do owner finance. So it's Maryland too. I know it's in Texas. Mm -hmm. That's terrible, man. But you can also do rent to own, from what I understand. That's the same thing. I, I know it's a technicality <laughs> of whatever. <laughs> Paperwork. Yeah, paperwork. Paperwork. For some attorney to review, to charge you, to transfer or something. Yep. There you go. Yep. It depends. SJ, it all depends. Man. I, there is no cookie cutter for this thing. If, it's, if the house is ugly, I'd, rate, I'd lower the rent. If it's pretty, I'd try to raise it. But really, it's all about what you can get. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, yeah. I've talked to numerous agents in this market, and no one is doing that in this market. Lease options? Yeah, they're just not doing it because they, they list them and sell them. I mean, they're not doing a lot of them. Mm -hmm. 
Rent to own. I've searched Craigslist and I found a few. Rent to owns. Yeah, rent to owns. Yep. That's where we're. Ha- that's where we live. We live in the rent to own Craigslist. Yeah. That's where you find them at, Chris. That's exactly yep. where you find them on. Yep. I hate to say it, but wholesales are the bird dogs. <laughs> Daniel, Chris, he wants to save enough money to do some Airbnb. Yeah, that's good. Paris, Minister of Real Estate. He wants to know if you do flips in D.C., uh, Chris, and what do you think about the condo conversion that's going on? Chris? Well, good question, Perry. Yeah, great question. So I have not done any. I would love to entertain D.C. My agent that I actually worked with on this house um, has a condo conversion that he just listed last Friday, so almost two weeks ago. It was a single family home, three bed, two bath on Kennedy Street Northwest, single, you know, single family brick row home. The owner uh, sold it for five twenty. They the developer who bought it, small developers, one of their first projects, from what I actually now understand, went to zoning, got it rezoned for a eight unit condominium. <coughs> They listed it per unit, 430 per unit times eight units. And they are in a week and a half, six of eight are under contract for full list. I mean, it's it's ridiculous. Unbelievable. Yeah. SJ, by land trust, are you referring to a living trust, Chris? No. No, we don't do living trust. That's an attorney who do that. Mr. Butt Nasty, good gracious. Being that I'm new, what would be the top three main things to learn about in terms of house structuring and renovating? Wow, good question. The first thing, um, or the first few things, turn off HGTV would be the first. (laughs) That's a good one, Chris. I mean, I actually did this. I actually stopped at a couple properties that were being renovated. I just talked to the guys that were doing it. Most of them weren't the owners. They were just the contractors, but they told me, oh, we had to rip all the floor out because it was water damaged. We left the floor joist, but we were able to keep the walls because the water went straight through to the basement. I mean, just having conversations. Nice. You know, I'd share my business card and say, hey, if you, you guys are ever in, you know, in in you know looking for work, I'm always looking for another contractor. Let me get your information. Um, I did. I think most contractors love taking pictures of their work. So if you ask them, "Can I see some of your stuff?" It's probably right there on their phone. Yeah, you know. Um, but point. I mean, because you're an entrepreneur at heart, I think that I don't want to say that. I don't know, you know, I don't know you that well, but I mean, yeah. talking to people that kind of just one of the things that is one of the things you have to master if you want to be a successful entrepreneur. Yeah. You know, some yeah. people might not want to. The cool thing is, is that if, if you haven't made the investment and bought the property, you really don't have anything to lose. You could ask the wrong question. It'd be okay. That's true. You really don't have much at stake. Yeah. yeah. All right. Final thoughts, Chris. We'll get up out of here, man. I'm going to be it. Yeah, I hear you. I'm not too far behind you. What I was going to tell you, I did write down to remind myself what I was going to tell you. Oh, that investor? Yeah. I had a young young lady came to our business to get some business cards a couple weeks ago. And it said, so-and-so real estate investments, uh, fix and flip, rehab. So we started talking. And she was explaining to me she she had been taking this mastermind class, this course. So we, you know, she was telling me, oh, we never use our own money. We only use other people's money. And I, I just Mark. that I've been hearing. I mean, it's a great education. And she said, yeah, the only thing is I'm on my second project because when you pay for this education, and that's where my antenna kind of went up a little bit when she said pay for the education, because I, I, I didn't know what she was talking about. But she went on to tell me that the first deal they do with you, your partner. So they walk you through the whole process. Nice. Yeah, which is great. And me being new to this whole thing, 
I asked her, I was like, how, how expensive was this course that you took? And over, you know, how long? She said it was about six or eight months. And it cost her about $50,000 in education. And she asked me, what did I do to learn to do what I'm doing? And I jokingly said, I just bought a house. Just did it, yeah. Right. And I didn't mean anything negative, but she's now invited me to her networking. They meet once a month. They wow. got private investors. They got everything. So she and I have been sharing text messages back and forth on while we're working each other. You know, I'm doing mine. She's doing hers. And she's telling me what went wrong. And I'm telling you what I did. And nice. networking. Yeah. That is so cool, Chris. Well, you are, you are a little unique, my friend. A little unique. And that you're, you know, running, running a business. It doesn't, I don't care if you're selling shoes, socks, houses, floor tile, cameras, whatever, man. You know, yeah. you got to kind of got to have a personality to do this yeah. thing. Yeah. All right, Chris, I'm gone, man. Thank you for hanging out with me, my brother. Likewise, I appreciate it. All right, peace. Class, thanks for hanging out with me. I'm going to be, don't forget, tomorrow I'll be on here with Eddie at around 2 o'clock. And Friday, we finally got our Jessica. It's just about done. She has to put her, sprinkle her magic on it. Our partnership, our joint venture agreement, we will have that on Thursday night. I'm going to broadcast Thursday. And we'll have it ready for you Thursday night. I love you. Make sure you subscribe, hit the like button. Please comment on what you're doing with your flips and how we can possibly, what other, what other value you want us to bring to your life. All right. Over and out. Realestateroundup.com. Peace.